Hey everyone, welcome back to Engineering Education. For this next problem, suppose that we have this second order circuit here, and the input to this circuit is a unit step function, and we're looking for the output voltage at steady state. So that is at time much greater than zero. So as always, pause the video, give it a shot, and we'll go over the answer in a bit. So to solve this, the important thing here is to know that in steady state, your inductors become short circuits and your capacitors become open circuits. And so at steady state, we can redraw this circuit as a source with a resistor. The inductor is going to be a short circuit. We have another resistor, R2. And the capacitor is going to be an open circuit. So this will just be your 20 and 90 ohm resistors. And because we're using the unit step function, this is going to be 1 volt. So the unit step function, just as a side note, so U of T as a function of T, is going to be 1 at T greater than 0. And so this becomes your voltage divider, which then is just 90 divided by 90 plus 20 multiplied by 1 volt gives us 9 over 11 volts. And that's the answer. So we didn't really need to use this transfer function as just another means of solving the problem. And so we're going to solve this using the transfer function as well for completeness. We'll separate this here. And we'll see if we can get the same answer of 9 divided by 11 volts using the transfer function given here. And so in order to find V out using this transfer function, we are going to take this transfer function and then multiply it by the input. And the input is the unit step, and the Laplace transform of the unit step function is 1 over S. So this is going to be 90 over S s plus 10 multiplied by s plus 11. So that's the transfer function. And then we're going to multiply it by the input to get the output, 1 over s. And so we are going to do partial fractions here to take this big complicated fraction and break it up into smaller fractions, which will have inverse Laplace transforms that we look up in the table. So for partial fractions, this is going to be some constant A divided by S plus some constant B divided by S plus 10. And lastly, some constant C divided by S plus 11. And so I'm just going to write this as we'll get rid of this 1 over S here. And I'm just going to put it down here. And so what we can do is we can multiply this entire expression here by the denominator here. So when we do that, we get 90 on one end, A times S plus 10 times S plus 11 plus B S times S plus 11 plus C S S plus 10. So we just multiplied all three of these terms, the A term, B term, and C term, by that denominator. And we also multiplied the left-hand side you know, by that same denominator and got 90 on the left and this expression here on the right. So what we can do here is we can set S is equal to 0 and then solve. So when S is equal to 0, this B term cancels, and so does this C term. And so you get 90 equals s is equal to 0, so that's 10 times 11. And that gives us that a is equal to 90 divided by 10 times 11 is 110, 9 over 11. And then you can set s is equal to, let's do negative 10 first. And when we set s is equal to negative 10, we see that now the 
A term cancels and the C term cancels. So now we'll be solving for B. So 90 equals B times S, which is negative 10, times negative 10 plus 11. And that gives us negative 10B multiplied by 1. And so B is equal to 90 divided by negative 10, which is negative 9. And lastly, we can set S is equal to negative 11 and solve for C. And so now this A term will cancel and this B term will cancel. And then we get 90 is equal to C times S, which is negative 11, times negative 11 plus 10 is going to be negative 1. And so this becomes 11C. And so C is equal to 90 divided by 11. So I'm going to write those here in the corner. So A is equal to 9 over 11. B is equal to negative 9. And C is equal to 90 divided by 11. So I'm going to erase this to give us some more room. So this ends up equaling 9 over 11 over S plus minus 9 over S plus 10 plus 90 divided by 11 over S plus 11. And so I'm just going to rewrite this with the minus sign here. And now what we can do is we can take the inverse Laplace of each individual term and get the time domain signal. So the inverse Laplace of 9, 11 over S is going to be equal to 9, 11 U of T. So the inverse Laplace of 1 over S is the unit step function. The inverse Laplace of 9 over S plus 10 is going to be 9E to the minus 10T. And lastly, the inverse Laplace of 90 divided by 11, S plus 11, is going to be equal to 90 divided by 11, e to the negative 11t. And so we can put those together. And then that gives us that v out of t is going to be 911 u of t minus 9 e to the minus 10t. Let me erase this. Plus 90 over 11 e to the minus 11t. And so we're told that t is much greater than 0. So if t is much greater than 0, we can say that at t is equal to infinity, these two terms cancel. And then it leaves us with 9 over 11 u of t. And u of t at t is greater than 0 is equal to 1, which gives us 9 over 11, which is the same answer that we got up here. So there you have it, two different ways of solving the same problem. I would definitely recommend not doing the partial fractions and just using the steady state analysis, remembering that an inductor in a DC circuit is a short and a capacitor in a DC circuit is an open. But if for whatever reason you forget that, then you also have this transfer function here that you can derive. And you have the values here of the capacitor and the inductor and the resistors, and you can, you know, derive it out by hand. There's always that option. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, enjoy engineering.